Within months of the Soviet Union's first explosion of an atom bomb in 1949, it was concluded that it was impractical and far too expensive to provide nuclear shelters for the general public. Government, on the other hand, was to be protected at all costs. According to architect Roger Morgan, formerly secret plans show that an underground network of tunnels links Whitehall to a series of nuclear bunkers half a mile away. Tracing the line of the tunnels at street level, it's possible to find evidence of what's below, if you know what you're looking for. To Roger Morgan, this curious structure en route is a telltale sign, a ventilation shaft from the labyrinth below. I mean, it's amazing that the public are walking past this site, which, you know, is part of a, a secret government tunnels and bunker system designed to withstand nuclear war, and they're completely oblivious of the fact that beneath their feet is this secret world. The Whitehall tunnels end below the former Department of the Environment buildings in Marsham Street, which are due for demolition this summer. Now that plans of the secret government war headquarters in the rotundas beneath have been released under the 50-year rule, filming permission has been granted for the very first time. The plans that I've been able to obtain of these bunkers from the Public Record Office show their internal layout quite clearly. They are constructed in the pits of former gasometers and the government utilised any handy holes in which to construct their bunkers and two gasometer pits were uh, very suitable. So the main two bunkers are circular, they're three storeys deep, uh, the roofs are 12 feet thick, the walls are 8 feet thick, there are something like a thousand rooms, two miles of corridors, uh, accommodation for 2,000 people, and their own artesian well, completely self-contained power supply, and uh, it was held that it could button down for three weeks in the event of uh, an atomic attack. The country was split up into a number of regions and there were regional war rooms, the idea being that some at least would survive. The uh, rotundas are the central collecting point for all the communications for the whole regional war rooms uh, network. So there would have been a large staff of civil defence personnel maintaining contact between all the various war rooms and relaying orders to the regional commissioners. In order to try to govern a city as large as London after an atomic attack, the capital was split into four sectors, each with its own war room with communication links to the Marsham Street headquarters. For many, the three towers of the Department of the Environment's office block in Westminster formed an unholy trinity. The ugliest building in London, some called it, made with levels of asbestos outlawed today Less than 30 years after construction, it now stands empty, ready for demolition. But one architect, Roger Morgan, loves it, or rather what it stands above. He belongs to Subterranea Britannica, a group devoted to every man-made space below the surface. How do you? How do you do? I'll come to see the bunker. And below here is a maze of rooms where life and death decisions were made during World War II, the Falklands and the Gulf War. For Roger, it's his only chance to explore before demolition. Above ground, buildings have come and gone. Below, it's unchanged. Two round bunkers called the Rotundas and a rectangular citadel were built here when the government requisitioned the gas company headquarters in 1942. There were two rotundas. One was used by the Air Ministry Intelligence and uh, the other was, went through various uses. First of all, um, the anti-invasion redoubt in case the Germans invaded, uh, and then a complete switch of role when it became the invasion planning uh, intelligence headquarters, both American and British. And this bunker in Marsham Street was well connected. A low-level tunnel links it to Downing Street and Whitehall. There was a central tunnel down the centre of Whitehall, and this was extended in 1942 from um, the Air Ministry, where it terminated, to this complex. So somewhere in this complex, which is not particularly evident, there is a vertical shaft connecting down 70 feet to the Whitehall Tunnel. 
In wartime and times of crisis, the place was buzzing. With a thousand rooms, there was working space here for 2,000 people. There was a very large communications center on this level, um, a 32 position telephone exchange, something like 10 telex machines, a radio station, cipher rooms. So it acted as a complete hub and nerve center for the communications for any sort of emergency situation on the surface. There's a complete life support system of filtered air. It was gas proof. There was clearly large stocks of food. Um, it was uh, supposedly capable of, of maintaining 2,000 people for three weeks, completely buttoned down. The effects of war are visible even down here. A World War II V1 bomb has penetrated to melt eight feet of concrete like so much plastic. This is uh, clearly the result of a direct hit. It's unbelievable. And when the heat was off, this deep shelter was home to civil service clubs and societies. Well, this is really surrealistic. It's a cricket net, deep underground in a concrete bunker. And my word, there's even a bat. Ah. Superpower club. Here's the ball. Here, where the Civil Service Model Railway Society played with train sets, another track system once carried the government's most precious secrets. Now, these were the Air Ministry coding rooms, which uh, received telegrams from the teleprinters and the radio station next door, which had to be coded and encoded. Uh, they came on little horizontal rubber conveyor belt system which is marked on the plan as being one foot off the floor and penetrating these walls. And yes, you can see here a hole that has been filled with breeze block in the original concrete wall, which is where the cipher telegram conveyor belt ran. From model trains to real boats and planes. During the Falklands campaign and the Gulf War, this was a communications centre. Oh, a map of the world. This is clearly been used recently, uh, I guess, for the Gulf War. Oh, here's Kuwait. Um, well, I, I presume that uh, a great deal of attention was devoted to this bit of the map. Uh, in this room. In a matter of months, all this, the passages, the bunkers, the control rooms, will be gone. But for Roger Morgan, the attraction will always remain. I'm fascinated to be somewhere where very large amounts of high emotion and drama have been played out. I mean, it almost soaks into the walls, and one can retrieve a faint echo of it by wandering around. Coding rooms, ciphers, intelligence, high paranoia and worry, what they must have felt like. One can pick up a vague atmosphere of it, and that's the attraction for me.